name is Orly Ganger and the title is Hole. Well, this project is a series of nine different sculptures that are basically stacks and um, they're spread throughout the entry pavilion, uh, sort of dealing with minimalism, post-minimalism, and um, a lot of those guys who made those big steel sculptures in the 60s, sort of a response to all that. The process is quite intense, actually, because uh, the rope is extremely heavy and what I do is not the rope. So it, it's a very physical process. You end the day feeling like you've used every part of your body to make the work. Uh, so sometimes you know, you're on all fours or you're pulling or shoving at this rope. It's a lot of, I think a lot of the process has to do with uh, the idea of persistence and uh, a continual devotion to something. So, the process is knotting the ropes, um, then I spread them out across the floor of my studio and spray them with a very large sprayer. And in this case, all the pieces were painted black. So my studio at one point looked like, literally like a cave. Um, there was, I mean, it, the whole place was black and the, the ground of the studio was almost like mud because the paint never had a chance to dry. So you're sort of sinking into this floor of latex paint. And uh, you know, the paint gets everywhere. By the time you leave the studio, there's like black coming out of every hole of your body. So it's, um, it's quite an intense process making the work. Hole came from the idea, I mean, I have a tough time with titles, but I was thinking about what I was actually trying to do. Um, and what I am attempting to do is to create sculpture, to make sculpture from the beginning to the end. And instead of, let's say, a steel sculpture that is, um, that the artist might send out to get made, this is made by hand. And this idea of actually making a sculpture whole um, was one of the was one of the thoughts and the idea of because of the nature of the work and it's layered um, and it's porous and you see the handwork you're sort of immediately being very honest with the viewer and revealing the structure of the piece there's nothing hidden in there I mean you see you see how each layer is built it's like seeing layers of the earth um, so that idea of making something whole and seeing it whole and understanding how it is what it is and then also this idea that because of the nature of the space and its nine different sculptures, that you really can't take in the show from one vantage point. Um, and that it's a constantly changing view as you move around the space. Each of the sculptures are named after um, the first names of some of the guys who won Mr. Universe. Okay, the, the big one up front is Arnold. Uh, then we've got Reg. Um, we have uh, Joe, which is the super tall one. And uh, Earl, Paul, Boyer, and uh, Frank. It's my guys. <laughs> It was cool to hear some people's comments who didn't know I was the artist who said that they didn't like it. <laughs> and that the piece beforehand was better because it made people smile. So that was okay. For me this project shifts gears a bit because most of my previous work has been quite organic looking and I wanted to, for a while now, I've been wanting to sort of somehow contain the organicness into an object. I've really wanted to make objects, um, something that was in a way self-contained and um, 
had boundaries to it. Um, so it's different in that sense. It's also, it's something that can be picked up and moved somewhere else. There are always challenges, but that's, you know, that's the fun of it. It's like a puzzle trying to figure out how you play with the challenges, how you push the challenges, how you fool the challenges. But um, I mean, this indoor space is huge in and of itself, so it almost becomes like an outdoor space. Yeah, it's challenging because it's indoor, but it's still public. I mean, it's an entryway, so you have people walking in and out, and it has to be quite functional. It's challenging because it's only natural light, so there's no smoke and mirrors at all. Um, what you see is what it is. Yeah, I mean, those were some of the challenges. I'm sure there are plenty more. <laughs> I just want them to feel something, you know. I think the worst thing is not to feel anything, and whatever it may be. I look at a lot of other art. Um, I look at a lot of nature, and a lot of it is more cerebral than visual. So I think about a lot of ideas. Um, so I, I think a lot of the work comes out of that. Yeah, that's a really tough question. That's like, what's my favorite color? I don't know. I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> okay. If I wasn't an artist, I'd be in a really bad place because I would have no idea. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'd do. I don't know. Cool. Good job. Sure. Make sure I look good. <laughs> <laughs> Most importantly. <laughs>